Hi, I'm Coach MK, founder of the Fitness Protection Program. I'm a run coach, not a life coach, but we're never really talking about the running. Running is the tool. It's the conduit we use to examine the world we live in, as well as its impact on our own lives and the lives of the people around us. How we react to certain people and to certain stories tells us a lot about how we view ourselves. I'm committed to the thoughtful, intentional exploration of the importance of running so that no one discounts their own badassery, ever. Final note, this podcast is geared towards every runner who won't lose their home, livelihood, or health insurance if they show up to the corral with a hangover. Not that I'm encouraging you to do that, just saying. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the Fitness Protection Podcast. Hi, this is Coach MK. We actually made a really super de duper need PDF that you should download before we start this podcast. This PDF will show you the four puzzle pieces we are trying to put together in the rebuild program. And hopefully the rest of this podcast will be really clear and you'll know at the end of it. Also, by looking at the document, whether or not rebuild is the right fit for you right now. My husband and I. I, we do, we have very different tastes in movies. It used to be not awkward for us to go to the same theater, see different movies, circle back afterwards. And then as far as we were concerned, we had something to talk about. He would tell, talk about whatever rom com, yeah. tween age, glee esque thing he had just experienced. And I would talk about, you know, the, I, I don't know, whatever documentary or, you know, something too violent that, that he couldn't handle that I had just seen. Um, like, uh, Ready or Not was, was a movie that we saw together over the weekend. And we saw that together too. Did you really? That is the first movie I've what are seen the odds? in months. What are the odds? What did well, you we, think? I, I know this is not what we play to talk about, but now I'm very interested because I have some I, opinions. <laughs> Tristan wrote a blog post about it, in fact. Did I'll he? I'll link to it. Oh yes, my did. goodness. How fun is that? I, well, I wasn't excited about this movie. I, like my husband is, is the person that like knows what's coming out week by week. And it, whether he wants to see it or not, he watches movie trailers almost compulsively. And I, I'm wanting to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Twin Tarantino's new movie, um, cause I've heard really good things about it and it's not exploitative of the Sharon Tate story or whatever. Um, and it doesn't glorify, it's allegedly, it does not glorify the Manson family. And that was my main concern. Anything mm-hmm. that glorifies these, these killers, I'm just, I have no yeah. interest in. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we do, we tend to do that when, when we tell a story, like, because the, even if the filmmakers just want to show, like, there was something alluring that attracted people, like, he wasn't this obvious, you know, if he had been just an obvious scumbag, he never would have been able to talk anyone into his circle. Right. But when you present that on screen, you're, you're glorifying it. So I feel really conflicted about a lot of Tarantino glorifying violence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So I, my husband had, didn't really want to see it. And he, when he suggested ready or not, I'm like, but that's a scary movie and you don't like scary movies. You do not like being scary. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Let's go. I, started it not wanting to like it and i ended up loving the ending so hard because i really didn't see it coming i was like in that moment of where i'm just gonna go ahead and spoil the movie here because most of you are not going to see it and that's fine so the premise behind ready or not if you want to you want to fill it in you look like you were bursted to say something do you want me do you want me to just tell tell what it is and then you tell your response because i I feel this might have hit you differently uh, it, the, the movie definitely hit me differently. Um, no, well, basically, it's a story about a woman who marries into a very rich family, and uh, she has to play a game. Who's made, who's made their fortune in, in board games. Who's made their fortune in board games. And there's a family tradition where everyone has to play a game when they marry into the family. And you pick a card, and the card says which game you play. And sometimes... No, see, that's a detail. That's a detail I think was really important. Not just you, but like every review I've read of it afterward missed this. The card, the box picked the card. Mm -hmm. Like that was the first sign in the movie that maybe there's something paranormal happening. Is it a game of chance or Mm -hmm. is it no chance at all? Did she never have one? The box is clearly magical. I mean, I I, I don't know how anyone was wondering about that. But yeah, no, I agree. That is an important detail. And and if the box picks the card that says hide and seek, then what you do is you hide and the rest of the family gets some very – old weapons and chases you down and tries to kill you because they believe that if they don't successfully kill you, then they will all die. And, and sacrifice so, you to Satan. Right. That, that's right. Not just kill you, maim you, bring you to an altar and sacrifice you to Satan. So, and this unfolds slowly over the course of the movie. 
-hmm. Like, you don't completely get all of those details and whether or not this is just insanity um, that, like, they've just been doing. Like, what becomes really clear very quickly is that none of them know what they're doing. This game has only been played once in their lifetime. Like, that card has only been selected once since, like, the patriarch of the family has been alive. And, no, like, one of them is, is, is watching a YouTube video, How to Use Your Crossbow. And it was so funny. There was so much humor in the ineptitude of like clearly mm-hmm. none of these people have prepared for this night but mm-hmm. i hated that dude alex i was like if you if they get together and turn on the family i'm gonna hate i was I, that's why i said i was ready to hate this movie mm-hmm. all the mm-hmm. way up until the very end i had me yelling mm-hmm. at the screen like i'm luckily we're at the alamo draft house and i can do that i can yell um, <laughs> and so i'm just like what the fuck what the fuck he's not you asshole because he hasn't told this girl anything he knew this had happened and you go through the whole movie wondering you know he knew that there was a chance that this could happen but the others who had married into the family one of them played old maid the other played that the card that the box drew was what checkers or something so it was like a womp womp i mean so you're sitting there thinking like well maybe you're tr- there's plausible deniability for alex until that scene where he's with his mother at the end and the family has chained him to keep him from helping her. Cause the whole point is like, she's not supposed to know what's going on. Um, she's not supposed to know that exactly how much danger she's in. Cause she could get mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he, when, when he's, uh, he's chained to the bed, he's talking to his mother. Who's like, you know, we really miss having you in the family. And he's, and he's like, I hate my family. I always thought, I thought we were normal. I thought it was normal. Every time I sliced open a goat's throat, covered myself in his blood and started chanting. But anything your family does, you just think it's okay too. And it's like, whoa, this isn't just a thing that happens. This is like a lifestyle. He knew a whole lot that he didn't tell her. She doesn't know this man. That moment was when I was then all in for the rest Mm -hmm. of the movie. Because I'd spent Mm -hmm. most of the movie up to that point just being like, expecting the when i say the worst i expected to not be surprised i was yeah. delightfully surprised like oh they are not making him a hero no she is not going to run off with him at the end no she is not waiting for him at all she's out of the mm-hmm. situation yeah so that was my take on it that was why i liked it and i just thought it was funny at the end what happened to you in-laws uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought of you on your vacation coming back drinking your first uh, cup of coffee. What happened to you? That the day we got back from that vacation. <gasps> oh, um, <laughs> so I, um, I think to your point that you were just talking about, I thought there were a lot of internal inconsistencies that really bothered me. And that was one of them. Oh. Like, you didn't tell her that this was a possible. No, I hate no. it when a movie decides to like hang its whole premise on two people who are about to get married, not having a difficult conversation. I, I, that really bothers me because it's just like, uh, dude, why didn't you tell her? Why didn't you, you tell her? You would have left. You yeah. would have left me. But you were the one who oh, wanted to get married. If I hadn't proposed, you would have left. Go to fucking therapy. You. Like, I'm right? sorry. Yeah. Like, if, if you really want to get away from your family because you think, hey, I don't want to, like, have satanic rituals anymore, that's something to take seriously. <laughs> and yes, you should, like, commit to that path. <laughs> so there's that. And the part that, that Tristan really hated, and this is most of the, the thrust of the blog post he wrote, is, is that all of the casual yet gruesome violence in the movie – like the really violent deaths are the deaths of the women, like all the minor characters who just get killed off really graphically. They're all women. There's the, there's the one guy, the butler who she like hits in the head with a, like a kettle, right? And so, yep. yeah, that's, he, he, he gets a little bit banged up, but that's nothing compared to like the babysitter and the maid and like the unnamed female characters that get killed off. And, His take on that was just like, yeah, well, this is a very misogynist genre, isn't it? And like, I guess. Well, I thought that was important because it wasn't about specific misogyny as much as it was. That was where I saw the elitism, right? They Uh didn't, they weren't given names. The family probably didn't know their names, right? Like, she was my favorite. Like, that was, that was another running gag. Like, she was my favorite. It was that it's, it's that they were disposable hired help. And that was supposed to, I thought that was a part of the storyline to separate the us from them because what they're really saying is at the end of the day they'll always choose family and the material and the legacy and the material wealth over anyone else period not love not a better life not 
anything moral. Like, yes, it was mm-hmm. kind of an eat the rich treatise that made me, that, that part made me a little like uncomfortable, but where we are right now in society. And I think we're seeing so much of that thought on a m- minor level that you don't mm-hmm. have to be fantastically wealthy to not care about those who have less than you because you see mm-hmm. your own struggle or your own. Cause all these, like yeah. that whole family there, they don't really care who's, who's being killed. They, they just want to stay alive. Yeah. Which is again, does not excuse what they have done at all. But I thought that was an important, that was an important detail. We weren't supposed to know. Yeah. But why not That's have a dude? That's true. I think you're giving the movie more credit than it deserves though. I, I, I think that it okay. can retroactively look back and be like, yeah. That's, that's what it was about. It's cause, you know, but, but I, I don't think the movie committed to that very convincingly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I think that it was, I think that it was a little bit lazy and there were many things. This is what, this is what bothered both of us. Like there were many things that could have been done to shore up the writing in order to make that a point that the movie was intentionally making. And yeah. like that just, um, that they, they weren't, that wasn't ultimately what they were really doing. And, and in fairness to the filmmakers, I'm sure it was the kind of movie that got noted to death. Like, you yes. know, like what they wanted to be and then what yeah. the studio thought they could sell was exactly. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot Especially of back and forth outside there. of the US. Like it needs to play in international markets and da da da. And yeah. um and Tristan made a comparison to the movie Get Out, uh, by the yes. Jordan Peele's movie. How like that that movie is really like taking a stand and and committing to a level of social commentary that this movie is kind of gesturing towards, but not really actually committing to in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I, so there were, there were parts of it that I found funny and entertaining. I am totally with you. I am so glad that she did not end up with the dude. I was also kind of gratified by the ridiculous ending. Um, oh yeah. When she said, I I want a divorce. And that was the, that was the moment when she like, that was what say, like saved her life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I liked, I really liked that. The, my problem is though that I'm like Alex. I don't like being scared. I I found the whole thing very stressful. I was very stressed out for the majority of that movie. <laughs> it probably like it was not for me. It was not a movie, but it but there was not a whole lot to see. Or the other choices weren't great. Um, I have to be in really the right mood for Quentin Tarantino these days. Yeah. I can appreciate a lot of things about his filmmaking, but I have a lot of issues with things that he's done. Yep. And so I'm that's a different you, mode for me to be in. I'm surprised you didn't make a comment about the child in the movie. Like there is mm. a scene where mm-hmm. um, she's ridden and she's hidden in the, the goat pit. This is the moment you thought you, re- you realized that they are actually doing satanic shit. In this family, oh, yeah. you, you kind of mm-hmm. wonder it's alluded to, but it's not like in your face. And then she's like w- walks up, wanders into the stable to hide, and there are goats all over. And then she falls into a pit that uh, that is full of uh, dead goat carcasses and the body of the last person who played hide and seek. And before she falls in there, she sees a child hiding, and she's like, "Oh, sweetheart, I just." I know that all of this is really scary. And he just looks at her and pulls out the pistol that had been missing earlier and shoots her in the hand, like doesn't even blink, just like fires. And that was important because when um later when she's in the pit and then Adam Brody from the OC, who will, all, will only ever be Adam Seth Brody Cohen. from the OC. Seth Cohen. Yep, Seth Cohen. Will, yep. I said the exact same thing. Like, I don't I didn't even remember that his name was Adam Brody. I was like, hey, it's Seth Cohen. <laughs> Like that confused him with Adrian Brody. And I'm like, was he in the piano? And, and, and uh. my husband was like, Adrian Brody was not in the piano. Um, let's, let's get it together. But okay. Yeah. I'm like, that's wrong movie, wrong movie. The pianist, the pianist. Mm-hmm. So Seth Cohen, who is, a, who is, who, who won an Academy Award at age eight for his performance in the piano, um, come, like comes wandering in <laughs> <laughs> with into the, into the goat pit to d- dispose of the, the, the babysitter's bodies with, um, with his sister and he's like, we all deserve to die. And she's like, my kids don't. And you, that's when you, I, the moment where I was like, actually, yeah, they do. You know, cause she and when she shot, realizes that her kid had shot her, then she's like glowing with pride. Pride. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, very... okay, that kid, there is no redeeming this child Mm-mm. who is like maybe what, seven or nine. Yeah, Cheyenne's probably. age. And yeah. it's like, at that point, like it's that, that kid is all in. That's the point of no return. I don't know. So it's like deserving. That's a weird thought. Does this child deserve to die? Well, that, that, that child just shot and grown up with an impunity. It's what everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. was what he said. So yeah. anyway, I thought that was really interesting too. They went a lot of places. I didn't, 
expect it. I didn't expect it to go. So and again, mm-hmm. not, not perfect, but so much better than what I was expecting when we went in and so much better than what I was expecting after watching what felt like a very, I've seen it before type of beginning, mm-hmm. you know, totally. like, yeah. Oh, I know where they're going with this. Ooh, mm-hmm. actually, I have no idea where they're going with this. <laughs> Well, good thing that had everything to do with what we were going to talk about on the podcast. Totally. <laughs> that was I mean, the perfect, the speaking perfect of deals, intro. <laughs> here we go. I got it. Speaking of deals with the devil, I know that there are lots of people right now trying to make returning uh, one that would love to facilitate a return to running. And it seems like the only way to do that would be to make a deal with the devil himself. Let me tell Not you. Are recommended. You this, no. Because, like they were even Googling in this movie, like deals with the devil. Are they bullshit? It's like they like the family, <laughs> the people who've married into this family aren't really sure. Like if we don't kill her, what's the worst thing? Are we really going to yeah, die? Like, and like, come it, on, guys. It was terrific. So no, you don't have to make a deal with the devil to get uh, to get anything back that you might have had before. So when it comes to the suites of programs that we have available at the moment and that we're, I know we've talked a lot about, um, we want, I really wanted to do a couple of episodes highlighting what we're doing, how we do it, um, why, and to hopefully like bridge the gap, is this program right for me? And tell you some of the success stories because it is serving the purpose I originally uh, wanted it to serve. And it kind of came from a place and time where I felt about as dark as in that movie, I, there, I can be very much picture myself on my bed, Googling deals with the devil. Is it possible? I just want my old body back. Not to say mm-hmm. I ever would go that, that far, but there's a desperation where that doesn't feel like a bad idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, can, what, what if, what if I just went into like one of the, what if I just went in and got one of those shots? Cause I, I had a friend who ran in college and got, and got cortisone shots in her foot because of an injury. I was like, what if, Maybe there's just something that someone can do. Maybe I can just have like a surge. Maybe, maybe I just need like some new One limbs thing. and I'll be magic okay. bullet. Yeah. Yeah. The magic yeah. bullet thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, it's, it's, it's really yeah. hard. Mm-hmm. Cause none of us are afraid to work hard. The irony right. of like, when we think about doping, we think about cheating. We think about taking a shortcut. We think about doing less work and getting the same result. When you're rebuilding, you are willing to do more. You want to do more. You, you, yeah. I will do whatever it takes to get there faster. And the only answer is less, or you're going to be right back where you were. So that was, um, it's tough. It's really tough. And, and I, I just remember, I know I've told this story before. Um, when, after I had Roz, I, I went to my OB for my, like, I don't know, eight week follow up or whatever. And she said, yeah, go sex. You can do that running. Great. Go for it. Yeah. Totally. You can start losing weight. Absolutely. Have fun. And then it was like, okay, well, she, which and to be really fair and to be clear, because I know we have a lot of doctors that listen to this podcast oh, and we have some totally. obese too. There is no medical concern on their part. From their point of view, will I die? Will I rip the stitches? Could exactly. I hemorrhage and bleed out? No. Like totally. the, the safety, That's the danger zone me. is passed. But what we can hear is go ahead and resume everything that you've been doing. Or And, and it's not like what like, I was doing before I had the time. baby. It's right. like, I'm going to go do everything I was doing before I got pregnant, mm-hmm. which is a very different thing. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the doctor's job to, to put that to you. So just want to be real clear. Yeah. I don't blame Absolutely. doctors, but we have to understand what that doctor is and isn't saying before right. you take a ball or run with it. Sorry. Yeah. And, and, and I, when I knew I was clear to start running, I said, okay, well, like, let's, let's do this. And I figured the only, uh, th- this is one of the things that, that I really want to emphasize is that, and we've both been here, the, the returning to running population there are just not a lot of really great options that, that we have when, when we're in that position. And, um, I do not want to beat up on couch to 5k because I think couch to 5k is a really great progression for the beginning runner who has not run before. And I used it pretty successfully when I was just starting out running for the very first time. Um, coming back from my pregnancy and childbirth, it was both not enough and way too much for me. Um, it was, it was, it was completely wrong for where I was at at that time because the intervals, the walk run intervals start out very manageable and they ramp up pretty quickly to 20 minutes of continuous running. And I could not run for 20 minutes continuously. I couldn't do it. It, it hurt and it was, it was terrible. And that, and, and when I couldn't make that jump to whatever it was, I, I think it had been like 
four or five minute intervals of running with with a couple of minutes of walking and then went straight to the unbroken 20 minutes. It was it felt like a very big jump. And I just like, I, I felt I felt like I was failing because I couldn't make that jump. At the same time, it's also if you've been running for a long time, it's not fun to just do walk run intervals at increasing rates. There's there's nothing that feels particularly um satisfying about that. Um, and feeling. all you can do is think about what your body used to feel like, you know, all you can do is, is think about how easy this used to be. And it is not. And, never and, feel I easy did, again. and I did not think it would ever feel easy again. Yes. Yeah, I know for for me, I'm still there, by the way. <laughs> I'm still there when because uh, when one of the things that we don't really talk about because it probably wouldn't make for a great it's not an article with the clickbaity headline you would click on um maybe i should write one with the clickbaity headline who knows but yeah. there it's, it's called neuro patterning it there those neurological connections um the synapses in your brain that's why accelerators strides are so important they as long as when the way that your brain speaks to your muscles is through a system of nerves your central nervous system matters you guys it is all connected to your adrenal system, to your endocrine system. So your adrenal gland is what controls, you know, it maintains homeostasis. It controls everything. And you, when I say you can't outrun your adrenal gland, whether you're trying to lose weight or to train, I will do more to get there faster. It's the thing that's stepping there saying, nope, you're like, this is too much and you feel fatigued. Nope, this is not enough. I'm going to make you feel hungry anyway, even despite, you know, the 1200 calories you consumed. Um, so there, you're, it's not like you're battling your body. You're trying to outsmart it, but there is a thing there. Uh, the downside to having that thing there is that when I go out to run, I'm, I've been running so much and so consistently for so long that my default pattern is, uh, 10 minute miles. Like that's, that's where my body just goes. And I mm -hmm. have to be like, Ooh, I'm not fit enough to have that as my easy effort yet. And I have mm -hmm. to keep backing off. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a good, a better place to be for sure from returning, but it's also easy to lie to yourself and say, well, this mm -hmm. feels easy. Therefore it's fine. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not fine. It's not fine. If you're doing this a lot and you've only been doing it a little before, that is your body saying that's, that's the assurance you need that you can get back to where you were and you need to take it as such. It's not a permission slip. It's a promise. It's a rainbow. Mm -hmm. The pr a promise that like we, we, of the th of whatever, that there's a pot of gold. Let's go get it. Yeah. So what the, the format that I want to follow with this, because I, you, you are the creator of this program. And I really want to hear about the way you envisioned it because that every, everything that you just said, I think is really, really key to understanding not only how you structure, you know, the physiological components of the program, but also how you sort of anticipate and think about how people are going to approach this mentally and what certain things are going to mean to them and make them want to do and how you're going to be there giving them good choices to make. You know what I mean? So, Absolutely. so I'd love to hear you talk about first, um, how, how you designed the running structure, how the week is structured and, and how, how you decided sort of what days were going to contain what and how to give those the, the the ranges for the two lanes that you give. I'd love to to give an explanation of that because we we want to give people a really like sort of high level view of how this program works and and why it works so well. And so the running is one component, and then the strength is a really really important component. The strength for this group is very specifically tailored to the needs of someone who's returning to running. And and I love the way we, we were visualizing this with with Kara with our. Um, with our wayfinder and we are talking about uh the four things that we are redoing and rebuild we're reviving reconditioning and refreshing and reclaiming and so i want to after after you give sort of your high level running and strength view of how the program is designed i'd love to touch on each of those points and we'll hear some voice memos from our rebuild athletes along the way too and i'm really excited for how those are going to inform the conversation me too. The, the, I really thank you for everyone. I know that was a little intimidating. Thank you for thank everyone you who sent us. So video. Much. Oh gosh, the voice memos are just like they They're came beautiful. at me during a during a during a, a lower point over the weekend. If you've been following my personal pay, Facebook page, you know it's been a rough. It's been a really rough month that culminated in in, in an event that I could have done without. 
Um, so getting those voice memos was very, it, was, it gave me life over the weekend in a way that I cannot even, uh, are, are described to you right now. So, um, yeah, cause it, the timings, the timing of it was really bad too. Cause we have to move out for the, the middle floor of our house to be taken down to the studs. As this, as this, uh, repairing the, the leak in the ceiling turns into a major renovation. Um, and now that, so when we had to start packing, the kids were like, are we hiding from the bad people? So they can't find us again. And I'm like, no, no, we are not hiding. I don't hide. I don't, and you don't have to hide. And this is how, and that was, that was the point when I was like, all right, we're calling the police. <laughs> so anyway, waiting for the pizza man and the police to come to our house was not how I wanted to spend my Friday night. Uh, oh but listening gosh. to y'all's voice memos um, over the weekend was, was soul affirming. And I could not be more grateful to each and every one of you. If I think back to the genesis, really, of what would have, would, if you, because it's always easy retroactively, haha, to draw deep mm-hmm. meaning out of things. And, and I definitely, def, definitely do that, not just with the movie, but I'm always going to love the fact that I over intellectualized, ready or not, in a way a Harvard PhD did not. Yay, me! Am I thinking too much or am I thinking the right amount? You're we'll just know. thinking way more just than the thinking. filmmakers did. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> When I was running with Nike in New York City, um, and I was pregnant back in 2011 before we moved to Houston for a short-lived stint down there, uh, it, this was the day I had to drop out of the group, and I was devastated. I was 25 weeks pregnant, and on my easy effort days, or their easy effort days, there was not easy effort for me at that point, but I, I could not hang at, at, with uh, my easy effort crowd. So I was like, after I, I stopped near Strawberry Hill, I cried. They each of them hugged me and was like, "We'll be here when you come back." At this at this point, we didn't know we were moving to Houston because I th- and I thought I would be back. Everybody hugged me one by one. It was really really emotional, and, and I was they didn't know I was crying because I really had to pee and I had to walk up Strawberry Hill to get to a potty. Um, but you know, but I was sad too. And someone said to me in my final hug, "You know, muscles have memory. You'll be back before you know it." And then final hug was from the coach who hugged me and said, "Muscles have memory, and that is what's going to fuck you if you're not careful as you come back." And I was mm. not really in the, the frame of mind to draw more out of that, but I was also not particularly coachable at that point in time. I had a lot going on in my personal life and I um, was still raw from doing a lot of what I call the ugly work in therapy that had been slowly pull, pulling the pieces of my life into where they needed to be so that I could be where I am right now um, mentally. So to that end, um, that thought, that, that comment stuck with me for reasons I can't even describe because coming back from my first baby wasn't a challenge. It was very easy. Coming back from my second baby was the one where I moved to Denver and needed the coach, tried, tried to find help and couldn't anywhere. This was like, mm-hmm. I think probably the more normal experience. Cause up to that point and, and when, and when I, when I was pregnant the first time, I, I had never taken major breaks. Maybe, I mean, breaks longer than two months from running. No, maybe there were periods where I was, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not Brett Kavanaugh. I don't have notebooks and journals of every single run I ever did. Um, and I can't, you know, explain all the history, but this is like back before we had Strava, we didn't have, you know, I wrote down my run days and I would go back and look through my planner and see what I had done, but I didn't like, we, we didn't have, you know, buttons to click. We didn't even have Matt, my run to figure out where to go. Y'all like we just, (laughs) <laughs> we mm-hmm. just guessed 10 blocks is a mile in, in in certain parts of DC and New York City. So anyway, all that to say, the muscles have memory comment really stuck with me. And I'm like, well, what what is it good for then if your muscles are going to outrun your tendons, joints, and ligaments? And this was part of what I started to understand at altitude when I was at altitude at the beginning of becoming the coach I wanted to hire that, you know what? This is going to be ugly and it's going to be slow, but it's also going to be logarithmic. We're going to get you up this really steep curve very quickly and then it's going to plateau. And by the way, a plateau is fucking beautiful, you guys. If you have plateaued, that means the work you're doing has worked. That is a critical step in the process. That means that your adrenal system, your adrenal gland is adjusting to you. It is finding that's new normal. And that's the synchronicity you need. Trying to burst through a plateau, I'm like, mm, nope, we you ride it. Ride it. It's like Flatlandia and be it, enjoy Flatlandia while you're on it and take your time. When you're ready to up the ante, your body will know. You will feel it. You will sense it. Go with that. And don't worry about it if it's two weeks or two months. 
it could, it's, it doesn't, def- that period of plateauing doesn't define you, but it's also not an excuse to do less work. So mm-hmm. I say that because I love well, plateauing to me. It's like, yay, you know, because I can, yeah. that's when I look back and say, yay, it's working. Not, oh no, it stopped working. It's like time for different work. It might be time for harder work. It's really exciting. Mm-hmm. What's the next mm-hmm. step going to look like? I don't know. I'm sympathetic to the way it's usually portrayed and pre- presented. I just have a totally different view of it. Um, and hopefully that's kind of shown through a little bit in rebuild. So, um, mm-hmm. you're giving me that look. I know I'm going down rabbit hole. Sorry. Uh, Sarah is the best thing that you, about Sarah, as I've been told time and time and time again, not just by the other Sarah, but by multiple people, you are very good at keeping like me on form and the meetings on form. And I, I, I really love that because my brain is, my brain is messy. So your brain is beautiful. I love it. Y'all. Thank you. It's it gets it's it's hard to contain in a sixty minute podcast that we we need to be seriously. So, the sort of thing that I determined the way this is how it all came about, right? So I I discovered the one I went back to the one forty cap um, for easy effort. I started wearing my heart rate monitor again. This is back in Denver, two thousand thirteen. Um, after I've had my son, and I'm and I went for my first run, and I had no idea that that was going to be eighteen minute miles. Eighteen minute miles in an hour. I had not quite. I covered a little bit more than three miles and my marathon training plan said I was supposed to cover six. And I'm looking at that thinking, okay, first of all, I do not belong even on this beginner plan, which is scary. Um, I can't yeah. do the work. I, there, I am not fit enough. And I know this because like the fittest I've ever been, I was doing 75 to 90 minute runs. Those were standard for my morning workouts. And that, that was even 10 years before that that was 2003, 2004, 2005, and six. Um, and then not after that. So I know I'm not fit enough for a sort of 75 to 90 minute workout. I know that staying out there longer is a bad idea, but I know I can't go faster. So if I can't go faster, am I doing enough work? I didn't know. I had never had to think this way before. So as I started going down the rabbit hole and understanding that it was more important for me to adapt my body to the work required, that it was more important that I be out there five or six days per week, that the mileage itself didn't matter. Once I could let go of that and and the plan that I came up with and structured looked a whole lot like my dad's cardiovascular rehab that we had started with when I was six years old. And the the genesis behind that and all of that was based on stuff from the from the Cooper Institute uh, down in Atlanta. He's uh, he was um uh, Dr. Kenneth Cooper is one of the the first researchers that really put jogging together with heart health uh, starting with uh, the U- United States Air Force Academy um and was well, sorry with the with the with the United States Air Force then that became the standard cardiovascular workouts for uh everyone all of the pilots during a certain period of time who would you know, who had a lot of heart attacks and they didn't know why they had the lowest physical fitness requirements. And he changed that. So he still does a lot of work. He's like 90 years old. He still runs and he's still alive and he still runs his biggest wow. down in Atlanta. Um, and we should probably, we should see if we can get, if he wants to talk to us on podcast, that'd be neat. Um, and went on coach Sarah runs with you when, when we, when we roll that out. Yay. But, Yay. um, so my plans ended up looking a whole lot like his and they were based on the same principles. It's better to be out there doing moderate work more frequently and not worry ab- until you're at a point when you can worry about performance that comes later. Mm-hmm. That's a reward. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So uh, trying to keep my head in the game to do work. I did not want to do. Cause I mean, I did not want to, r- I'm this body used to run six forties, seven twenties, somewhere in there at one forty, at one thirty eight, at one thirty five when I was wow. fit, not at altitude, but whatever I was still, I was fit. So I did not want to run an 18 minute mile. So, which is not to denigrate an 18 minute mile. It's, 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 that number is only important relative to where I was used to running. This was yeah. huge for me. Yeah. And, um, that's why I say convincingly, like running more slowly than you want to go at any given moment is the hardest thing you'll ever do. And I know that because I've been there and I've shared some of those on Facebook. Those runs still exist. Um, mm-hmm. some, uh, because I had, uh, I had a, a Garmin way back when and I had, um, the, um, a couple, I had pedometer. It doesn't really matter. I had the, I had early technology before we had other, mm-hmm. before, before Garmin took over the market. So, um, I, the mental component of this cannot be overstated. It's fine when I, I know that sometimes I'll say it doesn't really matter. Do what makes you, what keeps you going. But that's, that's why it matters that being there five days a week is, and doing this to get your joints, tendons and ligaments adapted is so much more important than worrying about your cardiovascular system because they are not two parts we can separate. Your muscles do have memory. They're going to come back like this. Your body will not be able to keep up with your muscles. Your lungs will not be able to keep up 
with your muscles and your lungs are a lot more in tune with your tendons, joints, and ligaments, which is why paying attention to your breathing is so important. If you go, and I know these workouts don't, they don't grab you, but take a look at the workout I did this morning on Strava. There'll be a link in the show notes. Don't let me forget, Sarah, to put the link in the show notes, please. Um, I did a two by two. And this is very much a marathon preparation workout, this two by two. So it was two miles to warm up, then two miles of two minutes uh, at, at tempo effort um, and two minutes recovery. And there was no time, no pace given to the two minutes tempo. She wants me to feel the effort. And tempo is roughly 10K pace, 10K effort, um, which is a two steps above Three, three aggressive steps above marathon effort. She wants to see if I can find it, number one. And what we're doing is averaging around what my marathon time will come out to be. So when you look at the miles that were the two by two miles in the middle, mm-hmm. one was like a nine, a nine oh six and one was a nine ten. That gives me a good, it's not a prediction. And if you treat it as such, you could game this workout, which is not the point. It's about, could you find tempo effort? No, I couldn't. Thank you. Thank you, Abby, my, my best running friend, the Buddhist who runs with me and tells me when I need to slow down. And because that's what a pacer is for. It's either to speed you up or slow you down or to help you find the pace when you can't. Now, every time I take a a sharp intake, uh, an inhale into my lungs, there's a little pain right here. And it almost feels like nothing is happening down here in between uh, the bottom of my rib cage. And that's a really tough thing to articulate. Some of it's the air quality right now, but a lot of it's my fitness level. So I have no idea what I'm doing or what pace I'm running when I'm out there because I've got all this neuro patterning and neuro conditioning that's telling me like I keep defaulting up to eight minute miles and it's a con or sorry, 10 minute miles and it's a conscious effort to slow my roll. And then when I push, I push the like seven minute miles and I have to slow my roll there too. So it's funny to be a one pace pony, but when you're rebuilding, you are a one pace pony. And it's, it's, I tell you that to tell you this, if I'm there now, there's nothing wrong with you for being there. If you've been there before, there's nothing wrong with you for being there. Don't judge it, but this is how we work with it. And this is how we learn to tune into your body and to your breathing. And until this air quality clears up and my lungs are a little, a little fitter and I can't get a good deep breath, it's going to be very hard to gauge my own effort levels, especially since I feel good for the first time in so long and I'm ready to do so much more work than my body is ready to do. The final note about the critical aspect of strength here is that you've got a lot of supporting players um, in your body that we don't get a lot of. We talk about a lot, like the 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 zzz in glutes, like we we think about the big muscle, the big glute. Um, we don't we talk about the glute mate or the glute men, but you probably couldn't point them out uh, on your body, right? We know they're somewhere on the side, but are they on the front, on the side, on the back, on the side? Like, it, could you come relatively close? It's funny how many of us can't. We know generally where where it is. We could probably circle it if on a, on a picture. But to point to it on your body is a very different story. Those muscles kick in when the big muscles start to fatigue. And when those muscles aren't um, recruited, and if they're not assisting, and all, all that's you're working too hard, then only your big muscle groups are working. So what you're over, you're overcompensating. You're not actually getting fitter. Um, and that's a problem. That's what's going to lead to injury. So all of the, all of the strength that I'm, I give, I know it doesn't look like a lot. I know it doesn't feel like a lot, but what the most, the, the purpose it serves is not to make you stronger. It's to make you functionally more fit by recruiting all of those little muscles that you don't normally use to get out of a chair, to walk around, to maybe, well, if you, if you were to do a uh, jump rope, but not a whole lot, very few of us do that. Cause I mean, how many kids, my, my kids aren't big enough to use a jump rope yet. They try, they fail, but you're not <laughs> actually jumping a whole lot when there's a rope around. You're trying to make sure they don't hit the baby. So to, to that end, the strength, the, the purpose the strength serves is uh, to make sure that you are recruiting all chains efficiently and effectively so that when you are ready to jump into lane two, jump into maintain that you, when you're ready to do more work, that you are able to handle more work with fewer risks of injury because you're working efficiently. That is the, at the very essence of this idea of running efficiency and running economy, you will run more efficiently. You will use energy more economically if all of those supporting players are working too. And it's not just the big muscle groups powering you through a workout that you don't really need to be doing yet. 
So mm-hmm. I don't know if that answered your question or if I just sort of went like at you, but that's sort well, of. I, I do. I, I have I, threads that I want to pick up from, from what you just said. Before we do that, though, I want to listen to a voice memo. Hi, my name is Becky. I'm 47 years old and I live in Southern Arizona. I joined Fitness Protection Program in May of 2019. I was familiar with Coach MK's heart rate training approach to running and found that her style of coaching, running, and general approach to life was a great fit for me. I initially joined the maintain program of the fitness protection program and found that that was a little bit too much for my body and my lifestyle at this time. And I moved over to rebuild and coach Sarah and coach MK have really provided me the support and direction to, uh, hover between the two programs, um, to make the most out of my fitness level right now, as I deal with a couple of non running related health issues and life in general. My favorite part of the fitness protection program is the level of support. Coach MK recently said in a podcast that the fitness protection program provides a safe place to do this running thing in. And that's exactly what I need. I don't have a huge running community in my life or people that really understand running. I have lots of people who support and encourage me, but none that really kind of get what running is. So the support and interaction that I get through the strength videos, Facebook, Ask the Coach, um, all of the different platforms that Fitness Protection Plan uses benefit me. I interact so much with people every day through Fitness Protection Program that I'll never meet in person. However, I consider extremely important in my life due to the influence and support that they have in my running. So Fitness Protection Program is a great fit for me. I recommend it to anyone I run into that's even thinking about uh, making running a habit in their life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Becky, for sending that to us. We love having you in oh God, Rebuild. Re- Becky's one of our Rebuild Tainers, uh, which is she's kind of straddling Rebuild and Maintain a little bit because she's not ready for full-on Maintain yet. And what she's doing, which is amazing, is not feeling like opting for mostly Rebuild uh, in her daily workouts. She does not feel like that is lesser or that is any kind of a failure or that it says anything about her. She's just saying, this is where I'm at right now and this is what I need. And Rebuild has the flexibility in it to give her exactly what she needs to keep the habit right now. And that's what one of the things that we're really working on reviving in Rebuild is finding that habit and making space for it. If you have been out of running for um, six months or more is, is, is what we tend to say. But really, if, if you've been out of the habit for long enough that you need help reviving it, this is a really good place for that because that is the focus. That is the emphasis of kind of every everything that we do. And, and so, um, Becky actually posted in Facebook this morning saying like, oh, I had such an amazing run this morning. Everything felt so good. I'm so, you know, I'm, I really, there's part of me that really wants to go to maintain, but everything in, but, but it's also like you were talking about plateauing earlier. Everything here feels really good right now. Things are working. I'm getting what I need. And therefore I know that the right thing for me to do is to stay right here until I know that I'm ready for more work. Um, and I just, I love that mentality so much. I, I think Becky, Becky's doing an amazing job of, of sort of showing the, the exact brain space that we really want people to find themselves in as they, as they move through this. Absolutely. So can you talk some more about the week to week progression, the the day to day and the week to week and kind of how you envision people moving through that? Yeah. So this is where like my, the, so the knowledge is one thing, but the experience is another. I, if there is no one could have explained to me after the birth of my fourth baby, how long the road to recovery would actually take and what it would entail. But, um, my, so even when, when I recovered from Cheyenne and ran or sorry, um, I was training to run New York City in 2012, and had Hurricane Sandy not hit, I would have been fine for it. Um, I trained again after RJ was born and ran in 2013. No time expectations, right? Because I'd been running 18 and a half minute miles for three months, and then 14 and a half minute miles for like two and a half months or something after that, and then showed up on race day and ran 
uh, a 424, 426. I don't remember exactly. Um, it was definitely not a 326. If someone's off by an hour or whatever, off by minutes or seconds, I'm like, no, I do not remember everything down to the minute or second, but I'm lucky I'm wearing pants. So that, so that's I, about that, 10 minute miles. You ran about 10 minute miles. Yeah. 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 Um, and RJ was born in uh, April of that year. So in the New York City Marathon, it's always the first weekend in November. Um, so I had really only started like training, I guess. I started running uh, six weeks after he was born, but I didn't start. But I also at the same time was, you know, trying to figure out how to do it in this body. So I would not say that my training really, really started. I wasn't doing any anything um, fancy. I wasn't doing anything on any training plan. I was just going out in those timed blocks every day, trying to spend working on my on my strength separately from my cardiovascular system. No specific workouts that were designed to make me stronger through running. So I would do strides and accelerators, trying to like leverage muscle memory and nothing more than that. But I also didn't know how to leverage muscle memory at that point. That would come later. So when, and then when I ran in 2015, after Shiloh was born, it had taken, uh, she was born in uh, February, it took me longer to get started for a variety of reasons, but not, I, I, my training started in earnest in June of that year. I was derailed for six weeks by a minor, uh, a minor surgical procedure uh, in my rear end uh, in, in, in July of that year. And then ran a 416, could have gone faster, but I was running with a friend. It was never, that was never going to be my race. Um, in 2015. So to come back and be stronger with only slightly more training, I felt really good about that. So I'm like, sure, I can be ready in six months to run New York this fall. And in, no one could, that was, that was not my case. That was not the truth, my truth rather. And I was just like, whoa, I was not ready to run last year and I deferred. And that really hurt on a, a lot of yeah. levels. I could have done it, but it would not have done anything for me mentally or physiologically, it would not have been the experience that I wanted. Because in 2013 and 2015, remember, I had no idea what to expect and showed up and had a better day than mm -hmm. what I was expecting to have by far. Um, yeah. And I, I did not think that was going to happen in 2007, uh, 2018. So I didn't try. So when what that has to do with the, with rebuild is that I didn't and well, the, the overall fitness protection st structure, if I was selling multiple subscriptions or different subscriptions, then you would have to officially change subscriptions from one program to the next. And I know how that can feel like a failure. And I want mm -hmm. to avoid that. This entire approach, I'm like, what it needs to be is a subscription to a basic suite of programs, which will be. Um, right now we have maintain and rebuild, uh, mm -hmm. and we're going to be including runner interrupted very soon. We're going to be including build for the new runner. Um, and I'm not, we're not, I'm not going to talk about the last one yet. That's, that's still, that's still very much, but there's, there's a fifth one. Um, so it's going to be every stage in your running journey. You have your subscription gains you access to a basic suite of programs. And from there, once you're in the membership area, you can opt into each month, whatever you need whatever the right fit for you is at that point in time. So if you're in maintaining, you get hurt, uh, you know, ideally you would then just switch over to runner interrupted and you don't have to ask permission. You don't have to talk to anyone about it. That is in mm -hmm. your control and you can use those resources and not lose your tether to the running community. If you are rebuilding and you think I'm going to do rebuild for two months and start training for this marathon. And in two months time, you're actually not ready for maintain at all. I don't want that to feel like a failure. I don't want that to feel like a loss. I don't want that to be what that, that, that purchasing decision being incorrect, not because you, you did anything wrong, but because sometimes life just doesn't go according to plan. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it not about being wrong. I wanted to take as much of that out as possible. You will always have access to these basic suites of programs. And when it came to rebuild, I thought I would progress a lot faster than I did after Violet was born. At the time, we had no idea that I had a tumor sitting on my right ovary that um, was not actually one of those benign cysts that happens when you get pregnant and everyone had been ignoring it. This is actually a dermoid cyst. Uh, it was a BFD and it had been growing for a very long time and it was impacting uh, hormone, my hormones. So what that means is that when you have too much estrogen, that inhibits your ability to put on muscle. It inhibits your ability 
to improve. Too much estrogen leads to um, excessive cortisol production, which impacts your lungs. Mm -hmm. So if ever you've been really stressed out and your heart rate is increased and, you know, your breathing becomes a little bit la labored or loud. That's why in the movies, like when that, when uh, in Ready or Not, when she was hiding in the dumbwaiter, <sighs> you could hear her, breathe. even though she hadn't been running, she was just scared. Yeah. That's all part of the process. So when you're mm -hmm. stressed out, it gets harder to breathe. It's more effort to breathe. And that's cortisol. So that was happening to me on walks. If you remember, there was a point where I was walking 30 miles a week and I was not getting any stronger. I was not getting any more toned. I was not able, I was maxing out what I could do, but I was not seeing any results. And this went on for months. In August, I'm, I'm not feeling better. My arms still hurting. My neck still hurting. And my muscles are not responding to workouts. All the strength that I'm doing, I'm doing Pilates eight hours a week. I'm in, I'm at physical therapy three times per week. I was running or walking an hour every day and trying to extend my long run. At that point, and by August, I just gave it all up. I'm like, I'm doing 27 hours each week of work and my body is not changing. My approach is what has to change. So I never again wanted anyone to be in that, in that place where you've been doing this thing for three months and it feels like you can't progress. You still have an option. If I had what I chose to do at that point was start uh, in my, my, my fitness journey was to start going back and saying, okay, maybe this isn't me. Maybe there's something yeah. bigger, more medically wrong. That was when I started acupuncture. That was when I started um, really seeing, I started going everywhere since yeah. medically I was being told nothing was wrong, but I had not yet seen my GP. So here's a uh, side plug. If you have not gotten your yearly physical, uh, go get your yearly physical. Like mm -hmm. you're the doctor who knows you go establish a baseline so that they, when I walked into my doctor's office, like last this past May, she knew something was wrong. She was like, this is not what I expected to see. 16 months after that baby was born, what's happening. And that was the first time anyone took what, what I, all the, all of these symptoms, like all of this work that I'm doing was taking it seriously and not just like, Oh, it's really hard getting older. Yeah. So the program, mm -hmm. and again, so that, that was made the baby was at that point, the baby was 16, 16 months of doing everything right. Not losing weight, not feeling stronger, not getting faster, not seeing improvements, labored breathing still from climbing stairs. And that, that would freak me out. Um, that's too long. There's something yeah. off. And if it takes, there's no way that I could have predicted 16 months versus 12 versus 24. Like, right. I don't know. So I didn't want anyone to feel penalized for basically guessing wrong or accuse them of guessing because we're mm -hmm. smart people. We think things out. We strategize. Yeah. We pivot and we keep moving forward. And yeah. hopefully with this basic subscription to fitness protection, that gives you the ability to pivot, stay tethered and keep moving forward even if you're not doing the work that you want to do yet. So that yeah. was the, the, so that was when I realized I needed those channels of maintain, rebuild, runner interrupted, build. So build and rebuild, uh, are, are intended to be in the same, the same bucket, but different communities. Um, I was like, well, that, co that covers just about everything. Awesome. With that in mind, what does each bucket need to look like? So to focus in again on what the rebuild bucket needed to be. I realized that that was where the lanes concept came in. We do not need, uh, we, I wanted this rebuild community to be, to be everyone who's rebuilding, whether you're rebuilding because you just had a baby, if you're rebuilding because, um, one of your kids had a, a, a medical need that was huge and kept and, and ruled your life for months on end and physical fitness had to fall to the wayside because you can't leave him alone in the, him or her alone in the hospital. I've had that happen before. I think of all the reasons I've known people to take big long breaks from running. And I think about like they shouldn't be penalized for it and they don't belong with beginner runners. I did not belong with beginner runners. I could have run laps around the coach of the, the five, the couch 5k mm -hmm. program near me. And which yeah. is not to say she's a bad person. She does her job. Well, she's there to encourage people who are developing the running habit for the first time. She mm -hmm. had no, I had no business being there. I would have been the party pooper. So mm -hmm. knowing I'm like, well, there is no party for me to join. So I decided to throw the party and mm -hmm. in rebuild, we got two parties going on simultaneously. What the, the two lanes that I talk about lane one, starts roughly 26 minutes per day and in, in, in the first week. And I think over the course of four weeks, we progress it up to nearly 40. Mm -hmm. um, in lane two, and this is an important aspect too, I ask everyone to spend whatever lane you start that month, 
I ask you to commit to it for the entire month before switching lanes because mm-hmm. the the difference between lane one or uh, the, between lane one, sorry, week one, lane one, and week four, lane two, is very different. So mm-hmm. it doesn't look like huge shifts week on week, but it shouldn't feel like huge shifts because again, we're not trying we're trying to adapt your body. We're not trying to outrun your adrenal gland. More work is not going to get you anywhere faster other than back uh, back to where you started, and we don't want that. Mm-hmm. So lane one is like 26 minutes lane two then. So if you've had one successful month, the question I want people to be asking themselves all the time is, do I want more work? Am I ready for more work? And I don't. And if, if the answer is yes, I do. Great. Stay there. Don't opt into something more until, until the end of the month. Yeah. Um, I, and the reason for that is we just don't want to overload. Cause once you also hit that point of central nervous system fatigue, which is not to say overtrained, but those your body's going to tell you very quickly when you're doing too much because the workouts we hit this point where you feel tired and you don't want to do them and it doesn't feel good and you think you're lazy and you're weak and oh you know I just need to, I just need to work out more and it's like mm, no that's a signal that's a signal to back off for one reason or another that's a, that's a signal to go like ride the plateau you we're misreading that signal as weakness as if there's something wrong with you and all I want to do is present the option what if you're perfectly functional the human body is so adaptable, but you can't force things. Maybe what you needed to do is less. Maybe what you mm-hmm. needed to do is chill. And maybe there's probably no one else giving you permission to do that, much less the command that I will. Yeah. And yeah. lane so lane one doesn't look like very much, but lane two is a whole lot more than that. It's about double what lane one is. And I, I say I'd, I would like you to have at least one month in lane two. Two is optimal. Before you mm-hmm. say to yourself, and that's the minimum, right? That's like to go back right. to your mantra right. with right. the minimums. This is a suggested minimum. Um, you know, at least two months in lane two before jumping over to maintain, because the jump from rebuild lane two to may, uh, like week four lane two in rebuild and week one of maintain that jump is, is very, very small. But mm-hmm. the progression from week one to week four and maintain is huge. So there is zero expectation that you will ever, and I explain all this in the membership area of the website, there mm-hmm. is zero expectation that you would go from um, the, that your first month after uh, in maintain after being in rebuild. There's no, zero expectation that you would do every workout as written. We mm-hmm. tell you exactly how to modify it, guided DIY, how to take this and wrap it around wherever you are. And if all you do is week one over and over again for four weeks, guess what? You got your money's worth Mm -hmm. because you kept being here and you kept doing work for four weeks. It's not about being able to do everything as written to perfection. I can't do it all as written, so I don't belong here. That does not exist. I I fully expect most people, most people, if not all people coming out of who have been in rebuild for an extended period, that an extended being like six months or longer, if for, for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter why. It's about not making too big a jump too quickly. It's not about you being defective or deficient. You're not. The, 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 the defect is in society that tells you that you're wrong and you're lazy and you're stupid and you're behind and you need to work harder and you need to push yourself more and you need more mental strength and more of this and more of this. You got all of that in a bag of chips, y'all. I just want you in this for the long haul. And I want you here coming back to the most important thing, back to that basic best thing you can do is this every single day. Keep you moving five days a week, but not so hard that you can't do a sixth and not so much that you don't want to go again the next day. I would rather have you at that point always perpetually wanting more work because that's where the magic happens. When you're like, I could do more and you're a little mad at me for not giving it to you, then you're fired up to do more work. Did you hear what just happened? That is the, that is, if we could get there and stay there for the rest of your life, just think of everything we could do as opposed to I've gone too hard. I wanted to do more. I did more because I felt like I wasn't doing enough. So I did more and then I got hurt and I'm injured again. That's the cycle that leads to less. And this always yeah. wanting a little bit more. It's it's not like getting up from the table, feeling a little hungry. Like there's no, I don't know why we celebrate that, but leaving a workout thinking I could have done another mile or two and not seeing that as a command to do more because you didn't do enough. Be like, ooh, I could do more. It's working. Yeah. That's the mentality. So now I think I, I really I have two voice memos that I really want to hear now because they're both from people who are in rebuild who are not coming back from an injury or coming back. They're in they're in rebuild because they want to be in rebuild. It's because that everything that you just said is exactly what they want, and they do not feel the need to push themselves to be 
in to, to be anything other than here every day doing what they need to do and what makes them happy and that's what they're getting right where they are and so i'm gonna i'm gonna play both of those now hi coach sarah this is my voice memo for you. I love fitness protection rebuild because it allows me to participate in running in a way that meets me where I am and supports me along my journey. I have severe asthma and Crohn's disease, and I was always told as a kid by my doctors that I wouldn't be able to be a runner because it was too hard on my body. And it was until I discovered heart rate training. Coach MK showed me a way to run that was easy enough that my body could handle it. I have managed to easy effort my way to multiple half marathons, a few full marathons, and a half Ironman. While I could totally run easy effort on my own when I felt like it, Rebel gives me structure, guidance when I need it, strength training, which is actually how I got faster with never running a hard effort run, and a community that supports me rather than makes me feel less than because I can't do all the hard workouts. So thank you, Coach MK and Coach Sarah, for making me feel like a real athlete because it means the world to me. Hi, my name is Megan, and I am currently in the Rebuild Group with Fitness Protection Program. A brief background on me. Um, I'm 46. I work full-time. I'm mother of two and a wife of one. While running is my primary exercise, I don't really call myself a runner. I've done two halves, and I like them, but I don't really relish racing, and I don't probably have any goals of a PR in, in, in the near future. I run because it's simple and flexible and usually because it can be done on my own timetable. So why rebuild? Um, after my last half, which I actually trained for with Coach MK, I really let everything go. I, I stopped running. I stopped exercising. I just sort of let life overtake me. And at the beginning of this year, I decided that I needed to be more focused on me and my health and to make exercise a priority again. So after a few months of regular gym time and running with my pup on the weekends, I fell off the horse again. I also wasn't quite sure that what I was doing, even when it was consistent, was really very useful. I felt like I was kind of haphazard. I did this one day and this another day. And I really wanted to get back to that intentional work I did when I was doing the heart rate training. So right around the same time, the Finnish Protection Program opened up Maintain and I jumped at the chance. And it really did feel like home. It was like comfortable, um, intentional. I knew what I was trying to do. There was something for me to do every day and somebody telling me what to do. And I just, I just needed that. But I also found that I was really embracing the DIY clause that MK allows. So when Rebuild came out, I hopped over there. And mind you, I'm not injured. I'm not rehabbing anything, but my commitment and my consistency. That's kind of what needed rehab more than my actual body. So rebuild meets me where I am. Uh, during the week, I'm primarily in track one because I don't have as much time with my school, work, everything schedule. Uh, but I flex up when I can and down when that's what works for me. Um, in rebuild, I'm much more likely to turn my training peaks squares green, which is super exciting for the inner four-year-old. Um, and I just like that my workouts have intention. So I like that I get to smile at Roz helping with strength. <laughs> I love that I have found the great balance of freedom and framework that keeps me committed to keep moving forward. So rebuild is my jam. Thanks. You're right there. Yeah. It's soul affirming. It yeah, is soul affirming. It is. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> I gotta admit, though, I love, love watching your voices. Too, man. <laughs> I love, like seeing, like I watch it at night. Uh, you, it's usually I, I, it's usually the last thing I do before I go to bed is I go back and watch your strength videos because I just want to see Roz push back on you today to be so comfortable. One minute, mommy, Roz, mm -hmm. Roz, the, the, the people who need to see me. One minute, mommy, they need to see Moana. <laughs> I'm just like it's it. I, I love everything about it. I really want to start putting these in the in our YouTube channel just because yeah, they're so stinking that. cute. And I yeah. want you to have them when in five years when you know if anything it'll be some. Uh, it's a Russian word. It's like a compromata paliva. You can be like, girl, I will put this. I will broadcast this live on Facebook. Yeah, you remember when you, you remember your Moana phase? I do. So you have, <laughs> you have some blackmail stuff. Yeah, good, There's good your, call, good call. But I but mean, she's also amazing. I I don't have a lot of the videos. Um, I don't have a lot of those videos. I don't have access to, to them anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Of my little my little babies around my feet while I was filming the very first set, and I wish I did. 
So yeah, yeah so my, my gift to you is put them in YouTube and put them up okay. forever. I will never, right. I promise you, I will never take them down for any reason. Unless you just, <laughs> unless you've requested in the course then. Right, deal. It's a deal. I, I like I'm it. really, I'm glad that, that people love seeing her so much. She loves it. She's very into it. Um, it's my, the other morning at breakfast, I was asking her if she wanted to come upstairs and do videos with me. And my husband said, Roz, you have fans. Not very many people can say that, you know, gotta, yeah, gotta go true. see your fans. Yeah. She was like, yeah, you're right. You owe it to the fans, Roz. I love it. Oh my gosh. What is, what is funny though, is I like how Tristan showed up for, um, Monday, but not for <laughs> yeah. Bulgarian split squat day. Well, I'll let you talk to him about that. He claims that he has to be at his office at 630 in the morning on Wednesdays. Yeah. I think it's because he looked ahead at the strength for September and was you like, know, no, I think he I could join us from the today. office. We can zoom it. <laughs> We'll have to figure out how to make that happen. Well, I just, I, I really love both of those voice memos because both Megan and Aaron are in rebuild. I don't want to say they're in rebuild by choice because everyone's in rebuild by choice. Everybody is making the choice to, to get up and get out and do the work every day. And I love that. Um, and, and it's, and I love that it's a very inclusive group and I love that there are people who are there and know that they are happy there and that it's giving them what they need. And they, they're listening to us when we say, you're making good choices and you're getting everything that you need right here. And you do, you do not have to want to race like Megan talking about how she's just not, not compelled to race and go after PRs. That is awesome. We love that. We love that you know yourself and we love that you know that it makes you happy to turn the training peaks boxes green. Aaron, I love that you can, that. that there's, I, I like to turn the training peaks boxes green when, when they're not green. And it's like, well, but, but that's because I forgot to turn my watch off and it went an extra five minutes and now it's yellow and I don't like that. I, I change it. Like your it. sticker I, chart. I, I, I go show. in and change it. Exactly. You can trim it. You can trim the workout. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. Um, and so, so I just, I just want to say, I, I love how both of you know yourselves, Aaron. I love that, that you have found a way to run when your doctors did not think you'd be able to. You found a way to make it not hard on your body. And, and, and here you are. And, um, and I just, I, I love that, that we have a place for, for everyone and for people who are here for all different reasons. And I also want to bring in um, Katie's email. So she wasn't able to record a voice memo for us, but she did send us a really wonderful email. And if I could just jump in and say the yes, other thing that I love ahead. and the reason that I'm crying so hard right now is that this is what I wanted. And this is what I was afraid wouldn't happen. Um, I wanted it to make it about the work and not about the runner. So instead of all we're doing is talking, one of my favorite podcasts is called show your work. Um, and it, it's a, it's a deep, it's a deep uh, dive into uh, the celebrity PR world. And full disclosure, I have friends that, that work in that world. Um, and I, uh, they're, they're obsessed with the notion that like you, we never see the work product because it's, it's gauche somehow in America to show your work. It's supposed to be easy and effortless, but then we'll turn around and stick you with that knife as soon as we say, but like we didn't see how hard, you, you know, it's easier for her than someone else. And we just make up the story because uh, some people can talk about their work. Matt Damon, um, losing 40 pounds in two months. Mm -hmm. And others can't, will only be criticized for it. So to that end, the story is somehow about our deficiency and not about the work we do. And when the, and the, even the nomenclature, the way we talk about it to say I'm dropping down from the fold of the half somehow feels like a yeah. consolation prize or a less yeah. than as opposed to it's about the work. And it's not like, it's not about the, like I'm a wimp. You can never opt into less. You can never. And, and I hate that. I hate that so much because it's not about you and not everything can be mentally strength powered through. It can't. So I love hearing that people are, are, are listening. Mm -hmm. Um, even when I don't make sense, somehow that message has gotten through that if maintain is more work than you're willing or able to do right now, hang out and rebuild, but stay in the maintain Facebook group. No one cares. No yeah. one cares. Or you know what? Help in the rebuild and then hop in the rebuild Facebook group. That's fine. I don't, it, it doesn't matter. You're not disappointing me as long as you're showing up. You're never disappointing me when you're making an empowered choice to do less because that's all your life has room for right now. I mm -hmm. love that. And I don't need any of you to race. You are all athletes and you are here and I will always choose you for my kickball team. I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm just so, I'm just so happy. That's what I wanted. And I just love that it's working. Yeah, me too. 
<laughs> Me too. And I love, and I love that people, I, I, there, there are some people who have had to deal with a lot and whose recoveries have required so much patience like yours. Um, and Katie is one of those people and to, like that I'm going to, I'm definitely going to okay. cry when I read this because it makes me so happy. <laughs> so, okay, here's Katie. Rebuild launched at a point when I was starting to spiral downward. I had been injured and felt isolated for so long. I'd held on and powered through and done all the things to try and heal and feel like myself, but I was close to my breaking point. I had been away from running for more than a year when I started Rebuild. I had my babies at ages 39 and 40, and it wrecked my body so severely that it was more than a year postpartum from baby number two before I realized the depth of my injury and put a halt to my running. I had such significant pelvic floor dysfunction and SI instability that I had difficulty lifting my children and getting out of bed. The breaking point finally came when, due to pain and instability, I fainted and fell down a flight of stairs, suffering a head injury. Many acquaintances and medical providers told me I should never run again. Not willing to accept that, I relentlessly pursued help. Anytime a physical therapist told me I would just have to accept my limitations, I cut them loose and found someone new. I am not yet back to 100%, but I've come a long way and understand a lot more about my body and what I need to do in order to recover. My current PT cleared me to run in April, and in May I joined Rebuild. And I just, I, I'm going to interject here for a second and say Katie has been through a lot of PTs. When she says relentless, she is not kidding. Now in month number five, this is Katie again, I continue to plug away. My progress has been slow and certainly not linear. It has been frustrating and hard. It has never taken me this long to return to fitness, and my easy effort pace is still two to three minutes slower than it was before I took time off. But this program has helped me reframe how I measure success, and I can see so many other ways that I've progressed. I'm getting so much stronger. I don't have to think about bracing my core before picking up my kids. I can sneeze without my back buckling. I can now run a steady, continuous 75 minutes. When I started, I could only run a minute before my heart rate spiked and I had to walk. I am now more resilient and my heart rate recovers much more quickly. I can slow my run and return to 140 in contrast when I started and I had to stop and walk. Best of all, I'm starting to feel really good running. It has been a struggle to get to this point until the last week or two, even easy effort still felt hard and not fun. But now I'm finally starting to cruise and flow and get lost in the run. And it is lovely. I don't know where this journey is going and whether I will ever return to the runner that I once was, but I'm not putting a timeline on my recovery and I'm just slowly, steadily plugging along. Even if I can never return to what was once my fast, I can continue to enjoy running and not be in pain for years to come. This is a total win. The structure of this program has been so important in my ability to persist. It's a great framework that starts out slowly and has a lot of guidance about how to advance the program. One of the biggest challenges was returning to five consistent days of running. Knowing that the workouts could be short and easy, I would squeeze them in at lunch or after work until it became enough of a habit that I was motivated to get up early and run in the morning. As time went on and I wanted to run longer, I did. There is no should, just structure for meeting my body where it is and building consistency. And it helps so much to have the support of Coach Sarah and Coach MK, who in these tiny steps can see huge victories. Thank you both so much for this program and for how much you care. It has truly been a lifeline and will continue to be a path for my recovery. Where I'm headed, I'm still not sure, but I'm excited to find out what I can do. So am I. Me too. Oh, Katie and I trained for a marathon together two years ago. And, and this was, this was before she took serious time off. And it was, and our kids, her oldest son is this, is almost the same age as Roz. Their birthdays are very close together. And I remember we were both planning a birthday party and running a 20 mile run on the same weekend that, that cycle. And I, I loved training with her so much. And I was so heartbroken when I stopped seeing her runs on Strava. And I just want to say, Katie, I'm sorry. I'm so, so happy for you. And I'm and so I'm proud of so you. I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you for persisting. I'm so proud of you for advocating for yourself. I'm so proud of you for pushing back every time a PT said you just need to stop this. Um, and which is not to say you all need to argue with your medical providers, but you know what? <laughs> it, 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 when someone says like you aren't built to run or you can't run, then they are not they're, then that's not the work you need to do. Then that the, their solution is predicated on that. Then you need a different solution. That's why I work with only with Alex Lanton at Atlas Physical Therapy in Stapleton. 
it, I will, I do not ever want to work with anyone else. So don't quit and don't move, Alex. Um, I, I it's, he's the only PT I've ever worked with. It's been like, I just accept that you're going to run no matter what I say. So I try to keep you moving, um, as, as much as possible and try to limit your ability to hurt yourself. And I'm, and I'm like, yes, that's exactly, yes, that's, that's, that's right. And I wish every PT did. And I wish every one did. And I'm so proud of you for, do, I mean, the hardest thing ever is saying, no, thank you. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. And you, you've just kept doing that. And that's how I know you're going to get back to where you were. I have no idea how long it's going to take. I never, like I said, I didn't see this coming for me and I'm still not, I'm still not where I, where I wanted to be. I don't even know that this, what I'm doing, going to do in November will be faster than what I did in 2015. But I can promise that it's more likely to happen if you stay here then if you don't, and you were doing all the right things, and I could not be prouder of you. This is the hard, everything's easy when you're fit. Everything you're doing right now is the hardest thing you'll ever do. We're going to look back on this. We're going to listen to the podcast and be like, do you remember? And it's going to be amazing because it's going to be funny. It's going to be so far in the past. It's going to be like little bitty Roz with a great big braids, you know, jumping in front of the camera with Sarah and be like, do you remember that? Oh my gosh, that was so long ago. I know that everything feels so far ahead of you right now, but I promise you it's, it's, it's where it is going to fly. I don't even know. 18 months ago is when I started. My baby is in, is in preschool right Can't now. So I'm a little that. more sensitive to time passing, but like it, but it, it happened and we got here and it got here quickly and yours is going to get there. You were, go- you're going to get there and we're going to be cheering for you every step of the way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Got, we have one last voice memo to listen to. And then, and then I think we need to wrap up with the high level, high level takeaways about rebuild. But this, this is, this voice memo is really wonderful and really special. And this is from Anne from Texas. Let's hear it. Hello, fitness protection, coach MK and coach Sarah. This is Anne from San Antonio. I've been in rebuild since May and it is the perfect setup for me. I'm not recovering from injury or a hiatus from running. I just have a lot of other demands and stresses. Rebuild is where I can get a little self-care time in for myself. I have enough type A-ness in me that nailing the plan still motivates me. It's been great that just moving forward has been the hallmark of the plan, where walking isn't lesser, but dictated in many of the workouts. And that is amazing because summer in Texas is no joke, and getting a walk in over lunch at work is really doable. My biggest issue with Rebuild is that I feel so successful and proud of myself. I want to see what more I can do. But it's not yet time for me to pursue a half or a full based on other adulting that takes precedence right now. So I keep moving forward. I'll get to be one of the cool kids and maintain at some point, but right now I'm getting what I need. Another thing I appreciate about your coaching and your brand is the introspection. To ponder my own motivations behind the choices I make or what I say I want. That you lift the veil of cultural programming that influences so much of our behavior. Watching you model this questioning and dropping knowledge like a soapy toddler helps me in my self-pursuit of being the most authentic version of myself possible. I am coached and loved. On the tough days when I question myself, I know you love me and are in my quarter, and it is a breath of life. Love this program and love you both. Oh my gosh, dropping knowledge like a soapy toddler. And that is the best sentence anyone has ever come up with to describe what MK does. That is what you do. That is what you do, MK. Thank you. I love thank you thinking so much. myself as a toddler. A toddler <laughs> with the confidence of Roz. <laughs> I want to show them my braids. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh, I love it. I love it. This is uh, so I, I'm glad to hear that all of this is landing. You guys have no idea how much work and angst has gone into and money. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of money to start a company. Yeah. Um, it it went into this and it, to know that the concept is landing at this stage is just, I, it, it validates me to my, to my core. And I don't think I realized how much I needed it until, uh, my heart started singing and I started crying a minute ago. Thank you for all of that. When it comes to rebuild, it's about finding the right amount of work and the appropriate work because everything is about bigger, better, faster, more, do harder, stronger, longer. And that's we, and, and when you want to start running, the, all, all, the only way to get in is like couch to 5K and then a marathon or a half marathon plan. But what if right. you just want to have a right. habit and don't want to race? And because the thing about a half or a full plan, there's nothing wrong with any plan. It's other than they start one place and they progress. So if you don't yeah. want that much progression, there's nowhere to go and right. we want to give it to you. 
So that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. The best thing we can do month in, month out um, that will keep you to get once you're in maintain. What can we do month in, month out that will keep you ready to ramp up when when you want to? So you have every option available to you and not overload you. If you're like, I don't ever think I'm, I'm never going to do a half or a full. Okay, great. Then this is what your longest long run needs to be. Yay. We make all of that really clear in the membership area too. So it's, it's good to know that what I, I the, the question of, do I want more work is the question people are asking themselves. It's not about the output or feeling bad about the choice. It's saying, you know what? I have time for this. So I'm going to be in rebuild this month and I'm going to keep, I'm, I'm going to keep the commitment. I'm going to keep the habit. I'm going to keep the five days per week. I'll ramp up when it's time to ramp up. For, but for now, this is, this is what I have room for. Not, I only have room for, it's not all I have room for. It's, I know I can do a hundred percent of this of rebuild. So I would rather do a hundred percent of rebuild for a month or two mm-hmm. that rather overdoing 60 or said maybe 70, maybe less percent mm-hmm. of maintain because every time right. you you see those red boxes piling up and, and maintain that is that can be for a certain type of person that can be a real deterrent and yeah. i get that so to yeah. about to know if you're that type of person and choose accordingly and really make this about you that's me perfect that is what i'm that type of person yes <laughs> i'm raising my hand never would have guessed it sarah Thank you for being right? so. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> I really need to share more on this podcast. I think I don't think people know enough about my my saga. <laughs> oh my God. Well, what's funny is that like my I, I my my closest friends are listening to it and being like, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. And like, and I'm I'm the tip, the people I'm getting texts from every week are one people I didn't know were listening, and two people I haven't really talked to in a very long time, uh, which is always nice and flattering. But but three mm-hmm. people I talk to all the time that are like. What? Really? What? I right. don't know. I'm like, well, th- I mean, there's, I guess this stuff doesn't work up in conversation. So yeah, when it comes to, when it comes to rebuild, we got to rebuild, not just your body, but your, the running habit, your desire. So we haven't really referenced it the way we intended to, but, um, I'm, I'm going to go, but back we'll have the graphic the that'll go with us. And, and you can, I think it's all pretty clear. We've, I think we've touched on all of those points and we yeah. can, we can thank our wayfinder for making us a beautiful visualization of it. Because what, and we also need to add probably to that is like what, who is rebuild for? It's for anyone who isn't ready to do the work of maintain. It's for people who are coming back after a period away for any reason. I don't care what the reason is, but what, what I do care about is that healing the injury is only one step in this complex process of returning an injured runner Back to the start line. You also have to recondition them. You have to make uh, running a ha- and all the little supporting players in that running habit. I have a, PD- a downloadable PDF about that too. We'll make that available in the show notes. Um, but it's my night before a checklist, and it was it, it was a checklist. I'm not a checklist person. Y'all know that. They, I checklists get lost in my house. So and I have ADHD. So I had I actually had a little checklist that I had to make and tape to the door of my bedroom to make sure I executed every night that would facilitate my, my run in the morning because even after 35 years, that got rusty when I wasn't uh, trying to get out the door at mm-hmm. six o'clock in, in, a, in, a, in a, as, as early as humanly possible. So we have to recondition like the habit we, so that we can we recondition all of your instincts so that we can revive the habit. Then we've got to re- re-adapt your tendons, joints, and, limp- and ligaments to this work. It's not, it is, I am more about that than about your muscles. Your muscles are going to be fine. Your, your tendons, joints, and ligaments, they don't get second, third, fourth chances. They only, they, they have nine lives, y'all nine, like maybe some of, some of us have less muscles. We can keep beating them up and keep coming back. They, they do, they can, they are, they have a wider range. So we want to leverage that muscle memory to your advantage and not in a way that could bite you in the rear the way that my Nike coach warned me about way back when. So I don't know how well we did uh, in referencing that, that the, the puzzle pieces uh, or using that as a roadmap. Um, but th- that was really high level what I was trying to go for. These are the four pieces that we need to put back together. And we can do that for a whole bunch of people. It could also be a tether for someone who is not rebuilding, but needs to maintain what they what they need to maintain is just maximum consistency during a really tumultuous period 
where maybe I can't do all of these really long runs, but I need not the bare minimum. We need a better, better phrase for it. Do you get, we need you to make a mantra about that, but we need to maximize our time for a minimum of self care and rebuild should either lane one or lane two should fit that bill for you. So keeping the tether, keeping the real estate in your calendar and keeping you advocating for it. Like, aren't you, you are never too busy to take care of yourself. You are never, and, 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 and if, unless you say you are, if you say you are fine, but if someone else tries to tell you, is you really need to be doing that right now? Yes, I do. Advocating passionately to keep that space on your calendar and not being guilty or shamed out of it because of what else is going on in your life. That is the value here and the value what you need a coach to do. Sometimes I, I fit real nicely under buses. Throw me there. My coach says I have to. My coach says that I, you know, I, and I, I will always serve that purpose. That's really what you're paying for $30. My, my, hey, no, my coach says I have to. It's really important. For some reason people will listen to that because you paid money for it. And, you know, $30 a month is, is minimal to be able to give you that excuse. That's a, like 90, that's a dollar a day, a dollar a day of pushback mm-hmm. uh, to make sure that you can do a modicum of self care in your life. We're so proud of everybody in Rebuild. We love you guys, and we can't wait to have more people joining you, and we hope that will be happening soon. Yay, because we really are. Do not ever forget, I mean, every word I said um, in the at the end of the August live stream I did with y'all, I like you are doing the hardest work of anyone in both of my pro- – well, all of my programs, all of two. You are doing the hardest work of anyone. Whether you are coming back from injury, whether you are advocating for yourself like Katie and going through PT after PT, if you are just got a lot going on in your life like Anne, like any, whatever you're doing to push back and justify to claim your time, to claim your space, to claim your self care, to get this done, all of that without a big goal that everybody can rally behind. That is some of the hardest work you will ever do doing the work that you don't want to be doing. I would rather be doing a, a, you know, mile repeats. I would rather be on the track. I would rather all of this would be easier if I was in my old body. I wish I could. I wish I could not doing those things and trying to stay in the moment and do the work that your body is ready to do. The stuff that you need to be doing right now. That is some of the hardest work you will ever do. Running more slowly than you want to go in any given moment is the hardest thing you will ever do. And you are pushing back and doing hard work in so many areas of your life simultaneously. I could not be prouder of you. And at some point, yes, when life gets a little easier and you are a little fitter and it all seems a little easier, we're going to look back on this and, I, and you're going to remember this was the the hard period and we got through it so you were capable of absolutely anything. Everything you will ever do, anything you will ever train for will be infinitely easier than what you're doing right now because you will have chosen that thing. If you're in rebuild right now, it's more than likely it's because it chose you, whether it's injury or busy life or whatever. It's you are managing like a boss. You didn't choose to do less. You opted to do less and stay connected and being on top of it in that way is hard. It is so hard. I really want you to like celebrate yourself and give yourself credit for all the hard. You are coached. You are loved. And we can't wait to see you next time.